Hey guys, this is Ray, and in this video, I want to talk about Windows 7 and Windows 8. I'm not going to dive into any features. This is basically a continuation to the previous video I made on Windows 8. What I want to show you guys is how to dual boot Windows 7, Windows 8. Whenever you turn on your computer, it's going to give you an option which operating system you want to run. Now, if you're running Windows XP or any other operating system, this video is not going to be for you. For many years, I've experimented with multiple operating systems. I've had Windows running on one hard drive, uh, Linux running on another drive. So before I get into the technical part, how to do both operating systems, I want to show you my computer and I want to show you the setup that I got going on here. As you can see, I have multiple drives. The most important drives here are the C drive and the D drive. Now, the C drive, of course, I renamed it to Windows 8. The D drive just says SYS. Basically, that's the Windows 7 drive. The other drives, sound drive, a backup drive, and an audio drive. Drive number H, basically, that's where all the Pro 2 sessions, all the Reaper sessions are at. So whenever I'm mixing a song, this is my mix drive. Just call it audio drive. Here's what we're going to do now. I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to reboot the system. I'm going to log into Windows 7. And there, I'm going to show you the software you need to run. All right, guys. So this is the computer BIOS. And every computer is different. For me, how I got here, when I booted up the computer, I hold down the delete key. Your computer might be a little different. From all the years that I've been working with computers, putting them together, repairing them, I've worked with computers that in order to get to the BIOS, you have to hold down the F2 key, the F12 key. Sometimes you got to hit escape. Best thing, look at the manual for your computer and find out how to get here. Also, the menu might be a little different. See, I have a computer that I put together. So the first thing you have to do, you have to go down and find your uh, first boot device. And in this case, it's the CD-ROM. But you know what? I want to keep it just like that. Just in case I need to reinstall Windows or install Linux, whatever I'm going to install, I need the CD to boot first. But make sure that your hard drive is second. You probably noticed that it's not allowing me to select a particular drive. I have a couple of drives in here, and basically, this is not helping. What I want to do, I want to go to hard drive boot priority. So you're going to go here. Once you're there, let me see if I could adjust this camera. I know it sucks. All right. Once you're here, you're going to have all these options. We know the CD-ROM is number one. Which of the hard drives do you want the computer to boot from? And in this case, I selected my Seagate 3500. If I wanted Windows 7 to boot, I would choose this option here, which would be the Western Digital 3200 JD. So if I wanted that to be first, Go to the keyboard, hit the plus, and put it all the way on top. And now that hard drive is number one on the list. So when the computer starts up, it's going to go to that particular drive. Windows 8 will start. But I don't want it like that. I want to make sure Windows 7 is number one on the list. When the computer starts up, I want to go right into Windows 7. There we make the modifications. Then we'll have the boot menu. So let's do that. So once you're done with all the changes, you would go to save and exit, but in this case, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to exit without saving. Yes, we just have to wait for the computer to do all these uh, steps here. Then it should automatically go into the boot option. So here we are, guys. So right here, we have Microsoft Windows 7 and Microsoft Windows 8. I actually renamed this. Originally, it would say uh, the developer's preview. I just called it Windows 8. So right here, I have the option to select any of the operating systems I want. So there you go, guys. That's how I set up my BIOS. And remember, you're going to have a different computer. So just find the manual. If you have a Dell, go to their website, read the manual. Eventually, you'll figure this out. Once you got everything figured out, you want to boot back into Windows 7. And you want to download this software here. Easy BCD 2.1 Community Edition. Here's the thing. They're planning to charge for the software. So go to their website, download it archive it just hold on to it eventually like i said they're gonna start charging for it they might add a couple of new features to it but this is definitely a program you should have put away you never know when you might use this again so once you launch the program you're gonna see this window here and over here you're gonna have all this information you're gonna have entry one it's gonna say microsoft windows 7 entry two microsoft windows 8 and like i said before i renamed this originally it's the developers preview and over here, you have the bootloader path, so very important stuff. So let's go ahead and go to edit boot menu. Once you're there, you're going to see Microsoft Windows 7. I have Microsoft Windows 8. And in your case, you should see Microsoft Developers Preview. And in some cases, it just might duplicate Windows 7 twice. And what I had to do, I deleted both of these, re-added the entries manually, and just renamed them accordingly. 
Don't worry, if that's what's happening to you, I'm going to show you right now how to fix that. Now, another thing that could happen, let's say you have two hard drives. You have your Windows 7 and a miscellaneous drive, and you've decided, you know what, I want to try this out, but I'm scared, I don't want to ruin the Windows 7, and you disconnected that drive, and then you install everything on that miscellaneous drive, everything works good. Now you hook everything back up and you boot into Windows 7, and once you open this program, you might notice it's not detecting the other drive. The reason it's not detecting the other operating system because that drive wasn't there when you were installing. That's nothing to worry about, so I want to show you how to fix that. Let's get rid of uh, the Windows 8. Let's delete that. Right now you see Microsoft Windows 7. Let's go to add new entry. So over here in type, you want to make sure it's Windows Vista slash 7. I believe that's the default. You really don't want to mess with any of these right now. By default, it should be Windows Vista slash 7. And over here in name, it's going to be the operating system. So you can call it whatever you want. In my case, I'm going to call it Microsoft Windows 8. And right here we have drive. So you want to select the appropriate drive. In this case is D. But you know what? Let's uh, make sure. Yes, right here, Windows 8, drive D. So you select the appropriate drive, add entry, and then you go back to uh, edit boot menu. And there we go. We have Windows 7 and Windows 8. Just make sure that Windows 7 is your default operating system. Now before you save settings, I want you guys to check this out. Timeout options. You have a couple of options here. Let me explain the first one. Skip the boot menu. If you have this selected, it's automatically going to go right into Windows 7. It's not even going to acknowledge Windows 8. If you select boot default OS after whatever seconds, it'll just stay at the boot option how many seconds you put. So, for example, I got 53 seconds. So, it'll stay in that window for 53 seconds. If you put 5 seconds, you only have 5 seconds to select an operating system. If you don't select within those five seconds, it's automatically going to boot into your default operating system, which is Windows 7. So let's just put it back at 50. And over here, we have wait for user selection. So if you keep that, it'll just stay at the boot menu until you uh, decide to choose whatever operating system you want to choose. Once you select any of these options, save settings, restart your computer, and everything should work. Now you should have the ability to choose between Windows 7 and Windows 8. Pretty cool, right? Now, if any of you guys are running Windows XP, I'm not sure if this software is compatible with Windows XP. Could be wrong, but what I'm going to do in the description, I'm going to put some information on how to do boot with Windows XP and Windows 7. So there you go, guys. See the thumbs up? Give me a thumbs up. You see the subscribe button? Click that. Check the description. You can follow me on Twitter. Check me out on Google+. I'll even put my email address there. If any of you guys have a question, just shoot me an email. I'll definitely get back to you guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is Ray, and I'm out of here. Later, guys.